the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For lo, through the cross has joy come into all the world. I wanted, want you to sear that, uh, that statement, that phrase, into your mind. For lo, through the cross, joy has come into all the world. And that is a, a line from uh, a hymn that we uh, sing uh, every single Sunday morning during Orthros. And so if you've been at Orthros, you've heard it for sure. But we also sing it every year at Pascha. And for the 40 days after, it begins that, with that, in that we have beheld the resurrection of Christ. But, so in talking about the resurrection, it has that phrase, for lo, through the cross, joy has come into all the world. And I wanted to say that phrase today for a couple of reasons. One is that it seems like I have been told over and over, over the course of, of perhaps the last few weeks and months, that people have felt like that they have lost their joy. They have lost a feeling of joy. And that is something that is troubling because joy is, of course, one of the fruit of the Spirit. And so if we are living our life in Christ and our Lord willing, filled with the Holy Spirit, then joy should be something that we should be exuding. Father Alexander Schmemann, uh, who a former dean of St. Vladimir's Seminary, uh, said at one point that the, the most difficult thing that Nietzsche ever said about Christianity is that Christians have no joy. But we say, for lo, through the cross, joy has come into all the world. And it might even feel like that we, especially in this country right now, have lost joy, or this, there's this sobriety and somberness, especially this weekend, right? Yesterday we celebrated the 20th anniversary of uh, the uh, attacks at the World Trade Center. And so there is this kind of sense of, of somberness and sobriety that we feel. But in that phrase, it is not a, a turning away and saying that, that difficulties don't happen or that uh, somber events don't happen because, remember, for lo, through the cross. The cross in and of itself is a tragic event. In and of itself, it is a, a somber and sad and sorrowful event. And yet, lo, through the cross, joy has come into all the world. And so I wanted to say that phrase so that that word joy can be resonating in our minds and in our hearts, first of all. Secondly, I say that phrase because today is the Sunday before the elevation of the Holy Cross. So on Tuesday, we'll be celebrating the Divine Liturgy for the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. And so we are beginning to celebrate and preparing to celebrate what the cross really means for us in our life. And so it is important for us to have that phrase, for lo, through the cross, joy has come into all the world as we begin to celebrate the cross. And the Gospel reading that we have this morning, these four very short verses uh, from the Gospel of John, is one that, Lord willing, can help us to see and understand the joy. The joy that is available to us in Christ, and not only the joy that is available to us in Christ, but to also know and understand where we are to look when we are feeling or experiencing things that are chaotic, things that are somber, things that are sad in our world. And so the easy one is the joy. Those last couple of verses in the Gospel reading this morning are perhaps the most famous verses in the entirety of the Scripture. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that all who believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life about everlasting life, about God offering himself, about God's love for us. And the next verse, 17, is very much in, in, uh, uh, tells us about joy as well because it says that the Son of Man came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So it's about our salvation. What is not to be joyful about those verses? Salvation, eternal life. God's undying love and the extent that he is willing to go for us and for our salvation. That is where joy comes from. We know that. But to get there, there is a hard couple of verses there. But in these verses, our Lord really helps us to know and again understand where we are to look. 
In the first verses of the gospel this morning, it says that Christ talks about how just as Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, in saying that, he's referring to an event that occurs in the book of Numbers. You all have read Numbers multiple times, I'm sure, but I'm going to remind you just in case uh, what that story is. And in that story, there are serpents that are going about in the camp of the people of Israel. And they're poisonous serpents, and they're biting the people, and the people are dying. And so Moses, because his ultimate desire is to protect those people, he prays to God and he says, God, what should I do in order to help these people? And God tells Moses, build a serpent out of copper and raise it up on a pole so that everyone who looks at that pole, at the serpent that is on that pole, they will be healed and be saved. Now that that might sound easy, but think about what you would do if a serpent was biting you, or even, at least if you're me, if you know that a serpent is anywhere within 50 feet of you. (laughs) You're going to be looking at the ground. You're going to be trying to avoid stepping on it and, and all of those things. But God is saying, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the serpents that are there. They have really ultimately no power over you if you look to the copper serpent that is there being lifted up by Moses. And I'm imagining he's talking not only about those who have been bitten, but if you are in the camp and you uh, just want to stand out there and look at that serpent while they're all going around you, you too will be preserved and you too will be saved. What a great lesson for us. But Christ likens himself to that and says the Son of Man will be lifted up. And of course, what he is specifically talking about at that moment is the cross. Because he is lifted up upon the cross and it is there upon the cross where death is destroyed. The power of death is destroyed. And so even knowing that, we say, lo, through the cross, joy has come into all the world. But we have to look to it. Just as the people of Israel had to look to the copper serpent, we have to look to the cross. We have to look specifically to Christ. Now I'm going to take this a little bit further. Because the Gospel of John is one that is very liturgical and mystical in nature. In this conversation that we hear these verses, our Lord is actually talking to Nicodemus. And he's already talked to him about how he needs to be born again. And of course he's talking about baptism. Well, there is a sense that this morning, if we think about where we are in the divine liturgy, this gospel reading, this looking up to Christ and this lifting up and the chance of eternal life and everlasting life being given to us can take on a very direct and profound meaning that is practical and living for us even where you sit right now. In the divine liturgy, there are two places where the Son of Man is lifted up in the Eucharist. The bread, the lamb that will be consecrated is first lifted up after the priest remembers all of the things that have come to pass for us. The cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand, and the second and glorious coming. What happens next? The deacon stands in front of the the altar, crosses his arms, lifts up the gifts, and says, Thine own of thine own, we offer, and the, the priest says, Thine own of thine own, we offer unto thee, on behalf of all and for all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He gave his only begotten Son, who is then offered for us and for our salvation. He is lifted up. And so here in the Divine Liturgy, we have the opportunity to see those gifts being lifted up and offered to God and to remember not only the cross, but all of the work that Christ has done for us and for our salvation. And when we look to that, we begin to know and remember that we too can be healed in the midst of darkness. And even more profound is the second time that those gifts are lifted up. After the consecration of the gifts, just before we we receive the Eucharist, the priest will put his hands on the lamb 
which has already been mystically transformed and consecrated by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he will lift up just that, that lamb that we will receive in the Eucharist. And he says, the holy things are for the holy. And we look at that and we realize that the goal of our life, the goal of everything that we do is holiness. And we don't do it by ourselves because we are actually fed by the living God. That all who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Where do we partake of life? What is the one thing we put into our bodies that is alive and can nourish us and strengthen us for the journey? The Eucharist. It is being lifted up in our midst. We have got to look to it. Just like the people of Israel needed to look to the copper serpent, we have got to look to the body of Christ, which we will then receive in the Eucharist and have everlasting life. Because the reality is, brothers and sisters, and I don't have to remind you of this, there are all kinds of serpents that are out there. There are all kinds of things out there in the world going around, around us, looking to bite us, looking to distract us and keep us from the Eucharist, to keep us from everlasting life. And in fact, in the verses just after this one that we heard in this morning's gospel, we have our Lord saying that out there in the world is darkness. And the light came into the world, but the darkness didn't want to have anything to do with it. And so, brothers and sisters, we leave our tents and we come to where we know the light is. And when that light is lifted up in our midst, we look to it and we say, that is where eternal life is. That is where chaos is destroyed. That is where suffering is done away with, where death is annulled. And then we can stand in the midst of all of those serpents and be fearless. For lo, through the cross, joy has come into all the world. Brothers and sisters, may we keep this in our hearts so powerfully Because we can have joy and transform this world of bitterness and anger and instead face it knowing that eternal life is there for us. But may we see it when it is lifted up. And may we not only see it when it's lifted up, but may we receive it in the Eucharist and do everything that we can to stay in communion with life. For lo, through the cross, joy has come into all the world. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.